last week we are in 1 Corinthians chapter 11. That's the chapter for communion. All right, 1 Corinthians chapter 11. We need to recognize that the Old Testament is an example. The Israel in the Old Testament is an example of the church in the New Testament. We need to see there's a type and there's a shadow. All there in the Old Testament, God was giving us pictures of what's coming. So we need to submit ourselves to the wisdom of the Old Testament and read and study and apply its principles, not the letter of the law, because we are not in the Old Covenant. Amen? We glean the principles that never change, and we understand. This is what God gave them to do, and, and this is what they had to do, but it's showing us a picture of what the church is like. Amen. And when we have communion, all you, are to, all you got to do is say, Lord, I'm sorry if I missed it. You're going to miss it. You are a human being. But get up. Get up. A righteous man will fall seven times, but he'll rise again. He'll rise again. You get up and you go forward. That's the way you're supposed to live. Amen. Well, I'm giving you license to sin. No, I'm not giving you license to sin. You are going to make some mistakes. But get up and understand that God is with you. All right. So, in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, Paul addresses the question of head covering, which was a church tradition at that time. And it's still a tradition today among the the Muslim faith. Also, some churches still practice that. It's a tradition that they had. So he says in verse 1, Imitate me just as I imitate Christ. Hey, that's good, eh? For a leader to say that, Look at me, and then you'll see Jesus. That's powerful. He knew he stand with God. Amen. So, you need to remember, in those days, there wasn't schools, there wasn't universities, the studies were done in the temple, and women were excluded. They weren't included in the studies. Thank God you're not living in those days. Okay, that's what the Taliban is trying to do in Afghanistan. Go back to those days. They don't want girls in school, and they don't want girls to study. They're going backwards anyway, but that's them. Remember that in church, the men sat on one side and the women sat on the other side. That's why in another chapter you hear Paul writing and says, Let the woman be silent in church. Because what was happening is during the service, they'll shout out to the husbands, Hey, John, what's he saying? I don't understand what this guy is preaching here and teaching. So he said, let them be silent in the church that they can ask the husbands at home. All right. So I trust that you'll understand that setting that the early church was. If you have so many uneducated people, and you're trying to train and, and teach people in the church, then it becomes a challenge. Now verse 2 says, Now I praise you, brethren, that you remembered me in all things, and keep the traditions just as I deliver them to you. But I want you to know that the head of every man is Christ. Say, Christ is my head. And the head of a woman is man, and the head of Christ is God. So there's order there. Now, you need to understand this. The head of every woman is not every man. The head of a woman that's married is a husband that has a responsibility in the family. You can't come and tell somebody else's wife, hey, I'm a man now, you must listen to me. No, we'll tell you where to go in a nice way. Amen. Amen. This is order in the church. Now the word there 
he is talking about husbands and wives, not just any man or woman in the church. You have no authority to tell somebody else's wife what they should wear and what they shouldn't wear. Amen. Their husband's supposed to see to it that it's done right. That's authority in a marriage in a home. Every man praying and, and prophesying, having his head covered, dishonors his head. So, I don't understand why the Jewish people still cover their head. But they, that's their tradition. It's their tradition, what they're supposed to do. When you go and visit Jerusalem, and you go to the Wailing Wall, they give you one of those things. They lend it to you for free. You can go and pray at the wall and come back and give it to them. If you've got a hat on, then it's fine. You can go and pray there. That's their tradition. But every woman who prays or prophesies with the head uncovered dishonors the head. For that is one of the same as the head was shaved. For if a woman is not covered, let her also be shorn. For if it's shameful for a woman to be shorn or shaved, you see, even that changed now. Now, the latest fashion and trends with our models, some of them take all the hell. See, traditions change. Times change. But this is what he's saying at that time. For indeed, a man ought not to cover his head since he's the image and the glory of God. But a woman is the glory of a man. Now that woman is the man's wife that he married. Okay, not all the women now. Because you'll be glorious after that. For a man is not from a woman. Ah, uh -huh. okay. So the first man was not from the woman. The first man was created. But woman was from the man because God took the rib out of Adam and created the woman. Remember that in the garden. Nor was a man created for woman, but woman for man. For this reason... A woman ought to have a symbol of authority over her head. Now listen. Because of the angels. So there has to be order in your life. Especially women. If you're married. And you are now operating in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And you're stepping out into spiritual things. There are fallen angels. That want to influence the world. These are the angels that he's talking about here. Fallen angels that want to influence you. So if you're not having the authority or under submission with your husband in love and walking together in unity, don't prophesy. Because you can be affected and infected by your attitude towards spiritual things. Do you understand that? When he says, because of the angels, he's talking about demons, fallen angels. Remember when Lucifer fell from heaven, one third of heaven's angels rebelled with him and turned against God. So there's a lot of them here. Most of them are concentrated on earth because they kicked out of heaven. So they look for opportunities to influence people negatively. Amen. Say, I'm healed in Jesus' name. Clean in Jesus' name. Don't listen to that silly voice whispering to you. Turn around and say, I'm healed in Jesus' name. They'll come and whisper in your ears. And they'll tell you things. That's why Paul writes to the church and he says, We're not ignorant of Satan's devices. He says, Beware of the wiles of the devil or the tricks of the devil. He'll throw darts at you. Where's the darts going to? Your mind. That's where the darts are going to your mind. And then when you are working on spiritual things, you need to understand here, that my mind must be renewed according to the word of God. 
I must love everybody in church. I'm commanded to love everybody in church. Amen. God commands us to do that. Doesn't mean that you agree with everybody in church. Now there's a difference between agreeing and loving. Because we're commanded to love. That's what God told us. But if someone says something to you that you know this is not right, it's not according to the word, then don't agree with that. So the angels he's talking about is fallen angels. Nevertheless, neither is man independent of woman or woman independent of man. So we need each other in the body of Christ. Right? In the Lord. For a woman comes from man and even so man also comes from woman. Talking about men that were ordinary, ordinarily born on the earth. Okay. But all things are from God. So did you understand that? I remember like 50 years ago in the church. If you came into church and you were a lady and you didn't have a scarf on. Then one of the elders will put his hanky on your head or something. It was so embarrassing. I mean, they even took it to another level that uh, you weren't allowed to wear pants not, not to church. That was a no-no. Even at home, if the pastor came to visit, then the wife is running to the <laughs> room to get changed and come back. So what, what, what was this? This was a tradition that the church practiced. And we understand that. But now... Will major on major issues. So remember that men, you have authority if you're married over your own wife, not somebody else's wife. You can greet them and be nice to everybody in church. Hallelujah. Judge amongst yourself. Is it proper for a woman to pray to God with the head uncovered? Does not even nature teach you that if a man has long hair, it's a dishonor to him? Yeah, I remember that. There was an evangelist that came to Actonville. And he hounded us because my hair was like here. He was looking for us to cut our hair. I thought this guy was crazy. And now I think back all these years, I think he was crazy. <laughs> That's life. Amen. But if a woman has long hair, it's a glory to her. And her hair was given to her for a covering. Anyone seems to be contentious, mark this verse down. If anyone seems to be contentious, if you think I haven't explained this enough, we have no such custom, nor do the churches of God. Can you mark that verse down? So I'm not, I'm not going to argue with you. I'm not going to debate with you. I'm telling you what I know. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. So now we get to... Communion in the church, in the early church. Verse 17 says, Now I give these instructions, I do not praise you, since you come together not for the better, but for the worse. When you come to church, it must be for the better, not for the worse. Amen. For first of all, when you come together as a church, I hear there's divisions among you. And in part, I believe it. Well, some of them were saying, I like Paul. Others were saying, I like Apollos. I said, well, who's, who's Paul? Who's Apollos? The one that died for you is Jesus Christ. Say, Jesus Christ died for me. That's the person that I worship. Amen. For there must be fractions among you that those who are approved may be recognized among you. Therefore, when you come together in one place, it is not to eat the Lord's Supper. In other words, when you're having communion, it's not supper time. It's just called the Lord's Supper because he introduced it at the Last Supper. You see, what was happening was, for in eating, each one takes his own supper ahead of the other. One is hungry and the other one is drunk. Yes, they did use wine for communion. Because you can't get drunk with grape juice. 
Wake up now. In those days, wine was like tea and coffee that we have today. Amen. Oh, Pastor, how can you say that? That's the truth. In some countries, they drink wine like they drink Coca-Cola. Amen. And you go there and you say you want a cup of coffee, they look at you like you're unsaved. It's the traditions of those countries and the churches. Understand that. Amen. What? Do you not have houses to eat and drink in? Or do you despise the church of God and shame those who have nothing? What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you in this? I do not praise you. So what happened was, the first person to get a hold of the, the loaf, eats it up completely. And he's full. I mean, he's full. He ate the whole thing. And the other one that took the communion glass, drank the whole thing. One is drunk and one is full. And the rest is looking at what happened here. Where's the thing? So Paul had to set order in the church. Everybody say order. order. So th- there has to be order in the church. You do things decently and in order. Amen. So you need to understand that he was giving instructions. And he says, I can't praise you for this because they were behaving very badly. But the same church had all the spiritual gifts operating. So your spiritual gifts Don't make you behave better. You must choose to behave better. Amen. You can't say, well, she's operating the gift of prophecy and he's operating in this gift or discerning of spirits so they are not carnal. No, it's easy to get into the flesh. You need to not allow yourself to get into the flesh and stay in the spirit. So you're sitting there and then your mind is reasoning things. Okay, he's saying that, he's saying that. What is my spirit saying? That's what I want you to catch. What is the Holy Spirit saying to you in your heart? About what I'm saying. So you know how you're operating. In the spirit or in the realm of the carnal mind. You need to think about everything, obviously, but you need to filter it by the Holy Spirit. Are you here? Say, I'm here. We don't want to abuse the Lord's Supper. If they were getting sick because they didn't understand what they were doing in church, partaking of communion, then I say to you, if you understand completely what you're doing, then you can be healed as you partake of communion. Because you know this is the Lord's body and this is the Lord's blood that I'm going to have now. It symbolizes the blood of Jesus. And I take that. So we need to think about this. Amen? And then say, Lord, let your spirit guide my thinking that I must not get into the flesh. For I receive from the Lord that which I delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night which he was betrayed took bread. When did he receive this? He wasn't sitting with the other apostles. He received it by revelation of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit showed him what happened at the Last Supper. Paul The apostle wasn't there. He got it by revelation. Like he got so much of the books of Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, all those letters that he was writing. He was writing by revelation. That's why Peter says when he writes to the church, he says, Brother Paul, when he writes, he's writing things that are difficult to understand. Because he was working on another level. Amen. He didn't condemn 
Paul's writing. He said it's just hard to understand. Why? Because Paul the apostle got this by revelation. You see we take him and we put him on a pedestal and say yes Paul and yes Peter and James and John. But what does the book of James says? Elijah was a man with like passions like us. So I want you to understand that God gave that revelation to Apostle Paul. He can give you a revelation that will line up with his word that others don't understand. But you need to submit this to the elders in the church and say, what do you think about this? You don't take something and run with it before you are now sitting in council. Because when he started his ministry, the Apostle Paul was saved on the way to Damascus. After three years, he came back to Jerusalem to find out from the other elders, Peter, James and John, am I doing everything right here? Because he was preaching by revelation. And when he submitted what he was doing, they said, it's fine. Just remember the poor. I said, remember the poor. And don't eat things offered to idols. Because in those days it was a big thing. They used to have their feast in the temple and have their parties. So he, he separated the church from what was going on in the world. Amen. You got it. We must examine ourselves when we come to church. We must examine ourselves when we come to church. Do not say, ah, this message is for brother so and so. I wish he was in church today. If sister so and so was here, it was just for her. No, it's for you. Take it and see what God is saying to you. Don't take the word and pass it on to others. You're not playing a game as they pass on the handkerchief or whatever. Amen. It's for you. Take the word and meditate on it. Amen. We must examine ourselves. Therefore, whoever eats his bread and drinks his cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. He who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner, eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. In other words, you take that and you say, I'm going to have some cold drink. You bring a judgment to yourself. That's representing the blood of Jesus. I said, that's representing the blood of Jesus. Amen. For this reason, many are weak and sick among you and many sleep. But for if we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged. See, that's the thing. We don't know how to judge ourselves. But when we are judged, we are chastened by the Lord that we may not be condemned with the world. So sometimes God allows you to go through a hard time because He's trying to get your attention to fix up something in your life. And you say, God hates me. No, actually He loves you. Amen. That's why Proverbs says, if you don't discipline your children, you don't really love them. I know the government says, well, Department of Education says you can't discipline them. In your house, you are the boss. Discipline them. Amen. And you'll be happy because they'll walk straight. If you don't, They'll go and they'll tell the teacher, this is the way I want to live. Then after a while, they're going to live with the teacher.
That's why we're having problems. Because you're not allowed to discipline your children and tell them what's right and wrong. I'm not saying you take a, 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 a cricket bat and hit them on the head. And you don't do that. You discipline them properly. Amen. But you see, we throw out the baby with the bathwater. In other words, the things that are good, we don't keep. We throw it out with the dirty water. This is one of our challenges. We need to understand that there are good things that we need to keep. Amen. Amen. And we need to walk in his word. And know that what God has, has done for us, he did it for us and he showed us. That, that means if we listen to all the so-called professors in the world, that means we mustn't listen to the Bible. That's what it's saying. Go and read Proverbs. It says you don't discipline your children, you don't love them. But the professor said this, hey, let that professor go and study more. You make your children walk straight at home in Jesus' name. Amen. Understand. This is your responsibility. It's your children. It's your home. And you're going to answer to the Lord. There must be order in the home. Just like there must be order in the church. There must be order. Hallelujah. I said praise the Lord. We must partake of communion in a worthy manner. In other words... We must repent. If there's anything in our lives that's not right according to the word of God, we must say, Lord, we're sorry. We did something that's not right here. Forgive us. And then you repent of that and then you partake of communion. Hallelujah. Don't say, well, one day when I'm perfect, I'll partake of communion. That day is not going to come. Because the devil will make sure that doesn't happen. Now be wise and understand that the process of sanctification where God is washing us with his word is a process that takes place. It is a process. You don't arrive where you immediately have everything in order. As you make some mistakes, you repent, you get up and you try again. When your children learn to walk, how many times did they fall? They took some steps and they, and they took a fall. But they got up and you encouraged them to get up. Why didn't you encourage yourself to get up? And say, I can do this in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. There is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. If you did something some time ago and you asked God to forgive you, don't go back and ask God to forgive you for the same thing again. Amen. Because he forgot about it. I said he forgot about it. Your father in heaven forgot about it because he chooses to forget about it. Amen. You're the one that remembers. That's why your mind needs to be renewed by the word of God. That's why we need to apply the word of God to our minds and say, get rid of all these things, Lord. Help me forget in Jesus' name. I said in Jesus' name. So next week we'll get into the gifts of the Spirit. You want some gifts operating in your life? You need to understand that God wants you to have it more than you want it. Because he gave it to you. He wants you to operate in these gifts. And you'll have it. In Jesus' name. Let's all stand. Say this with me. Lord Jesus, thank you for the Holy Spirit. Thank you, precious Holy Spirit, that you are teaching me the word what you want me to know, what you want me to do. Concerning communion, concerning the way I should live. Thank you, Father, for saving me. That my name is written in the book of life in heaven. Thank you, Lord, that I am recorded in the register of heaven. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, amen.
Amen. Put your hands together for the Lord.